1995 was an iconic year for many reasons. I looked like this, and movies could now look like this thanks to technology like this. But 1995's most shocking and incredible pop culture event didn't come in the form of a fancy celebrity or some new way of making movies. It came in a beautiful, small aluminum alloy box called the Sony VX1000. Hey, this video is sponsored by Artlist and we'll probably talk about them a little bit later. In 1995, it was not normal to be carrying around a pocket-sized camera that could record video anywhere. And if you were filming video in public, well, you might just get hit with a brick. In the 90s, if you wanted good quality footage, you were either shooting film, which costs an absolute booty ton, or you were using shoulder mount broadcast cameras, which use beta cam tapes, which, guess what, also costs a booty ton. But behind the scenes at Sony, there was one man running a covert operation that would change the entire filmmaking industry and eventually lead us to where we are today day with small cameras that capture insane quality. This one man was Jay Sato, who oversaw Sony's personal video division from 1990 to 1995, and one of his biggest jobs was oversight and production of the VX1000. Somehow Sony was able to take the tech from their large beta cams and mash it into a tiny aluminum alloy body, and one of the biggest developments they made was implementing the DV tape into this camera. The DVs were much smaller than VHS and beta tapes, even smaller than high eight tapes, which is kind of crazy, but these tapes are still able to capture 500 lines of resolution. I know, it's crazy, and high quality audio. Like that. The VX released for $3,500 back in 1995, and yeah, I know that sounds like a lot of money, but back then it was actually targeted toward the news market. But something happened that not even Daddy J himself could predict. The skateboarding community absolutely devoured the VX1000. Inside this case is possibly the most iconic Sony camcorder that has ever been made. Oh my gosh, this is cool. Oh yeah, it smells like the 90s. On the case, right there, it says, it's a Sony. Whoa, it's bigger than I thought it would be. I've never actually used one or seen one in person. Ladies and gentlemen, the Sony VX1000. I feel like I have to be quiet in its presence. This is a sacred relic. There's the legendary microphone. Dude, this thing is in great shape. This also has the badge on it that says it's a Sony. That must have been a thing back then. They should bring that back. I feel like that's kind of like a cool flex. Like, yeah, it's a Sony. All oh, the switches feel incredible. We have the camera, obviously, but there's a few more gizmos and gadgets we gotta open up. But I knew I could not get a VX1000 without also getting some wide angle adapters. Yeah, we do it. <laughs> and then there's one last thing that is gonna make this camera really fun to use in the modern day. I've been wanting to get one of these for years now. I finally bit the bullet. It is a clear click digital converter. And you can just take the cable outputs from the camera into this thing and record to a micro SD card with this and you get a better visual with the monitor. So I don't have to use any tapes anymore on my retro cameras. Everything we could want to do with this camera is going to be possible with this guy. We need to take our time and actually rig out the VX1000, build it out exactly how we want it, and then start shooting some stuff. VX doesn't have quarter 20s on the top, so I'll have to get creative with rigging. First, remove the lens cover and attach the wide angle adapter. Second, we have to find a way to mount our new recorder to the camera. This monitor doesn't have quarter 20 threads, but I found a monitor mount that perfectly fit around the bezels without damaging the screen. Third, we need to connect the monitor mount to the top handle. A simple natto rail will get the job done. Hey. And lastly, we just connect our audio video cables and wrap it up nice and neat with a bongo tie. Everything feels super solid. Now it's time to test this thing out. If you know anything about the VX1000 history, this is not the death lens. The death lens is an iconic lens made by Sentry Optics. They made the MK1. It was so legendary that a group of skateboarders got a petition signed with over 7,000 signatures just to have Sentry Optics continue to manufacture the lens. Please, Lord. Hey, there we go. We're just gonna start with the built-in lens without the lens hood. I'm just gonna start recording now, so 
We are rolling. I have my zoom rocker here. It looks like the camera is auto exposure on right now. One thing that's definitely turned on right now is First of all, me, just kidding. The steady shot stabilization, that, that little hand sign that Sony's famous for. Oh, that must be the photo button. This button right by the zoom rocker, I think is the photo button because when I hit it, it freezes the frame. And when I let go, it stops. So another cool thing about this clear click monitor is you can review your footage and there's audio on it. In that up position is auto, but I can switch it to manual and then use this ring that has a nice sturdy feel to it. I can actually like see the focus pretty well on this clear click monitor as well. That focus is hard to pull because the sensor is so small, I'm guessing. So now if I switch it up, I should be in auto. So let's try this. Now I'm just in autofocus. It's so fast. And I'm zoomed in pretty far. What the heck? Let me zoom in all the way. Oh my gosh. Can confirm Sony's autofocus from the 90s is still maybe as good as Panasonic's in 2024. <laughs> That's what they get for not inviting me to Japan. Ow. I promise we're gonna film cooler stuff than just me out in the rain by myself. But now I just wanna see the difference between the standard angle lens and the wide angle lens. This is the built-in lens as wide as it can possibly go. We're in the same exact spot, putting the wide angle on. It's cool, it just screws on. Oh, it definitely softens the lens because even when I focus, it's pretty blurry. And now this is the wide angle lens, the 0.5 fisheye. Apparently there's a lot of history around the VX1000's microphone that's built in. Now this is what it sounds like with my Rode Wireless Pro audio. Just imagine me grinding this rail, guys. But I knew that for me to truly understand the power inside the VX, I had to make a trip and film some actual skateboarding material. <laughs> Okay, so I'm here with my buddy Matt, who's a much better filmmaker than me. No. And he's also a skateboarder. This is the only thing that I did for like 15 years of life was be at this place with this camera. A lot of getting really low like this. I had a separate skateboard for filming people, a, a, a filmer board. We'd go all the way down to the stair set, you know, and then you had to film the bottom of the stair set. Like, you'd be doing a line, you know, doing a line, you're slowing down. If they landed the trick and it was a keeper, you mark the footage with your hand in front of the camera. That way when you were capturing the hours of footage, you would stop every time you saw a hand because hard drives weren't huge back then. So like you only wanted to import what you needed. Dude, can I film you doing some skating? Yeah. Do you film with this? I definitely want to film with this. Skate tape coming 2026. Sponsor me. That's what they should be called. My friends will be like, can you make me a sponsor me tape? Can I do one spicy potato soft taco, one cheesy bean and rice burrito, and that's it? Alrighty then. Dude, Ken, good job on that sponsor me tape. What music was that? I used Artlist for all the music in this video. Is it just like a list of art? Brother, it is so much more. Also, can I have one of those? There you go. Artlist has some of the most high quality music you can get for your videos. Doesn't Artlist also have sound effects, stock footage, and motion templates? Uh-huh, yeah, and I can tell you're reading a script. Fine, you do the thing. Okay. Artlist recently partnered with a street graffiti artist to make motion video templates for your videos, and it's none of that AI-generated BS. Man, if you want access to incredible music, stock footage, backgrounds, and more. For the love of God, please click the link below the like button, and you'll get two extra months for free. Artlist is incredible quality, highly recommend it. I use it all the time in his stupid videos. Whatever, dude. All right, let's try something a little bit more 90s for this next song. After using this camera for myself and getting used to it, I had a thought come into my mind. How does a camera become iconic? First of all, what other camera is famous for its built-in microphone? Usually, our built-in microphones on our cameras are like the biggest joke about our camera. They sound like absolute doggy doo-doo. But the VX microphone was so good and sounds so unique that Wooden Camera actually made a VX mic that you can put on your camera to get that iconic sound. 
For a camera to become historical, I think that the main thing is it needs to simplify a workflow because of its advance in technology. The VX brought broadcast quality footage of the time into a compact handheld form factor. I believe this camera transcended the word handy cam and became the handle cam. This camera feels incredible to hold. This body style made run and gun filmmaking accessible to pretty much anyone, not just professional camera operators. You could just give your buddy the VX, tell him to shoot low and point up a little bit, and he was probably gonna get a pretty decent shot. And it's interesting, I believe the spirit of the VX lives on a little bit today in cameras like the Sony FX30 and the FX3. Just look at how the internet filmmaking community went crazy when we found out the creator of blockbuster sci-fi film was shot on a $3,800 camera that a lot of us have access to nowadays. The same thing was happening with the VX back in the late 90s and early 2000s. It revolutionized the filmmaking space. When the VX became fully adopted by the skateboarding community, now everybody had the potential to make their skate tapes and sponsor me tapes look like the pros. The playing field was leveled in terms of quality, which meant that now skaters had to make their videos even more creative and pull off even more insane tricks just to stand out among the crowd. And getting my own VX and using it now has reminded me that we're in a similar time now. Pretty much all of us have access to cinema quality footage, whether it's in our pocket with our iPhone or with our little Sony cameras. Any camera nowadays that's come out in like the last five years can produce top-notch quality. But what are we gonna do with it? We can let the camera collect dust on the shelf, we can do what everyone else is doing just to get some clicks and views and try to have social influence, or we can sit our butt cheeks down in our chairs, put our pen on the paper and write something that's really fun for us or a fresh idea or something that's just engaging even just for yourself and then go out with your friends and film the dang thing. Make sure you guys like this channel and subscribe to this video. Drop a comment. Let me know what retro camera I should make a video about next. Follow me on Instagram for short and dumb stuff. Join the Discord so we can chitty chat with the all, all the cool kids in the community. Watch out for deer, please, and text me when you get home so I know you're safe, you are loved, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.